Good morning and welcome to St. Agnes. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our readings can be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1039. Our entrance hymn is number 463, From Ashes to the Living Font, number 463. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death. Well, they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews were with her in the house comforting her, she saw Mary, saw Mary get up quickly and get out, go out. They followed her presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, come and see and Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm very happy to welcome Father Tim Farrell, who's the pastor of Sacred Heart Parish in Farmington, New Mexico. He's here to represent the Gallup Diocese and to ask for our help. So I definitely hope that you'll listen wholeheartedly to his plea and be generous in your response. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Father Saunders. Mm -hmm. My people back home are watching on this live stream. This is my high tech. Okay, just so you know. Started this during the pandemic when I was in the church all by myself, and they, I have all kinds of people, the military in my parish, we are a huge military parish, um, and uh, all sorts of homebound people, and people all over the place uh, uh, watch. So they didn't know I was out of town. So the nine o'clocks are just finding out that I'm in Virginia, so they'll, they'll hear at the same time you do why I'm here, okay? I'm Father Tim Farrell from uh, the Diocese of Gallup, as Father Sandra said, and I really do appreciate you all having me here uh, this uh, uh, weekend. 
I came in on Wednesday and I went and visited my nephew who's Father Joe Farrell at uh, George Mason University, he's a chaplain there. And uh, I've met some people who know him. And, uh, and, and so that's my nephew. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's, he's good. He's a good guy. Uh, and uh, my brother and his wife came uh, to visit. Uh, and that was really nice, too. So it was kind of like a little uh, get together of family. And I haven't seen them in like four years. Uh, the pandemic got in the way and just uh, everybody's busy. So again, I'm here to beg money. That's what I'm here for. Second collection today. A few things uh, people ask me, uh, have asked that after the last masses, uh, can I send it this way or that way, all this high tech stuff. <laughs> we're we're uh, Diocese of Gallup, I don't know. Uh, what I would do is if you uh, can't give today, you can always drop a check uh, or cash by uh, the rectory uh, and that would probably be the best way. But Venmo or whatever it is, uh, I, we, I don't even know what that is. Uh, <laughs> I am on, live streamed on Facebook, so I'm high tech there. And uh, so that's about all I know. And, uh, and, and so thank you for understanding that. But uh, I, I have uh, had Father Saunders out to my parish several times now. We've seen a lot of my diocese. Uh, if you want to know my diocese, you just uh, think of Monument Valley, you know, Stagecoach, John Wayne's movie. That's my diocese. That's right down the road from me. Uh, and uh, all the other great John Wayne movies, Gary Cooper movies, those were, uh, many of them were, were right near where I live. And uh, so it really is beautiful country, stark, but we like it. And uh, so uh, the high desert of New Mexico. And I, my parish is right below the Rocky Mountains, uh, right near Durango, Colorado, right south of there. So that's where I go on my day off. All the Durango people come to Farmington and uh, all the Farmington people go to Durango. So we switch off. I mean, that's how we do those things. If you are skiers, you might go to my area Purgatory Ski Resort. Purgatory is not just a place we go when we die to get ready for heaven. It's also a ski resort, major ski resort, right above Durango, and then Wolf Creek Ski Area, which is a little, just a little further above Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Listen to this. I just saw it this morning. Uh, Wolf Creek Ski Area has reached almost 500 inches of snow this winter. They've shattered all records. We don't know what to do with the snow, but we love it because we've been in a drought. Well, we're a desert, so we're always in a drought. But we need the snow in the mountains to come down, and we got water coming down this spring and summer. So if you don't make it this winter, come out this uh, summer, the mountains are going to be amazing, uh, the wildflowers and all the rest. It really is a beautiful area. Of course, I, I'm uh, kind of partial to it, and uh, I've lived there most of my life at this point. David and Janice are an elderly couple in my parish who for years have driven the 83.8 miles from Crown Point uh, on the Navajo Indian Reservation to Sacred Heart Parish in Farmington. For the longest time, they would drive daily to attend mass. They would show up when it was snowing. And I'd say, guys, <laughs> you, could, you know, that's a rough road. You, you need to be careful. No, we want to come to Mass. They're very holy people. Uh, now, what's interesting is that they have a Catholic church in Crown Point, but they have always thought of Sacred Heart in Farmington as their spiritual home, and I am honored that they feel that way. It makes me feel really good that they would come all that way. As they have aged, and Janice has now uh, come down with Parkinson's disease, David makes the journey himself on Saturday afternoon. We have a 4.30 p.m. mass on Saturday, and I give him a picks of hosts each week so that Janice may have communion daily uh, and watch mass on Facebook live stream. They are persistent in their faith, and they inspire me because of that. As a priest in the missionary diocese of Gallup, I have found a deep faith among the people there Every Saturday, there, there's myself. I, I'm the only priest in my parish. 
uh, a parish about this size. Uh, it's the largest parish in our diocese. We're, uh, you know, one of the border towns. And uh, Father Jeff King, who helps me out from St. Mary's Parish. But we hear confessions every Saturday afternoon, and the line goes all the way from the altar to uh, the confessional, and our church is twice as long as yours this way. So it's a very long line, and it winds all the way to the rear of the church, and that's a great problem. I love that. It is that persistence of faith that inspires me. My parish is a combination of Hispanics. Now we have uh, the New Mexico Spanish that have been there since the 1500s, straight from Spain. They're, they're, they come from Spain uh, in the 1500s. Native Americans of different tribes, you know, the Navajo, the Apache, the Hopi, the Pueblo Indians, we have several Pueblos that have churches they still use from the early 1600s, dirt floors and all. Uh, then we have the Mexicans who have come in, uh, and then we have Anglos. Uh, they're all lined up in that confessional line to ask forgiveness for their sins. And that persistence of faith of the young and the old, that inspires me. The persistence of the faithful can even be a bit aggravating. Years ago when I was assistant pastor at Sacred Heart Cathedral in Gallup, under Monsignor Gomez, there was this very nice Zuni lady, Zuni Indian from the Zuni Pueblo. By the way, Zuni Pueblo is where the Spanish first came into the United States and planted the, the, the cross, uh, the faith uh, there. And so she's very proud of her faith rightfully. And she would insist that I give her a large seven day votive candle. And she also insisted that I take her money. Well, I, I really didn't want to take the money. I'm not supposed to, but she was insistent. And I didn't really have to give her a candle because they were all in this little cabinet and everybody knew where they were. But she insisted on that over and over again. She would ask every uh, seven days for that. And I said to her one day, Helen, you can just put the money in the slot for the candles. You don't need me to get the candle, nor do you need me to take your money. And she smiled and said nothing. About a week after that one-sided conversation, I was at the Gallup Mall, and I saw Helen coming down the aisle. And I backed into the clothing, because I saw her coming. I thought, well, I'll back here, let her pass. What I didn't know was I was in the women's clothing section. That, <laughs> that didn't go over very well, I'm sure. But it was at J.C. Penney's, and I thought she'd pass by. But Helen saw me, of course, and she said, Father Tim, can you give me a ride to the cathedral? And I hung my head and I said that I would. She had no automobile, it was a very hot summer day, a three mile walk for her. Uh, and so I took her to the cathedral, we got out, went into the cathedral, and as soon as we entered the cathedral door, she said, Father Tim, I need you to give me a candle. And she gives me the, the money. And I was so flustered as we got uh, toward the place with the candles, I said, Helen, why do you insist that I get you the candle? Anyone can get you the candle. You can get it yourself. And she smiled and said, but Father Tim, I light the candle for you. She had done that week after week. And the reason she wanted me to give her the candle, the reason she wanted me to receive the money, it was for me. I was so humbled by that in that moment. I, I was really ashamed of myself. It taught me a lesson. Rejoice in that persistence of faith. It deserves so much more from me, from all of us. And we hear in the gospel this morning that persistent faith of Martha, St. Martha, so much so that she angrily says to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And due to her persistence of faith, Jesus raised her brother Lazarus to life from that dark tomb. So I come to you this morning at the invitation of Father William Saunders, your pastor and my friend, 
who has visited my diocese many times and has seen the great poverty of my people. He knows the struggle, the hardship of the poor people in the 80,000 square miles of deserts and plateaus and mountains in my diocese. And so he has kindly let me come and just ask you to give to the poor within my borders. They may not have much, but they are persistent in their faith. And like St. Martha, they trust in the Lord to help them. Every penny you donate will go to the poorest of the poor, I promise you, in the poorest diocese in this nation, poorest by far. We may not have much material wealth in the Diocese of Gallup, but we have a wealth of good people where the faith was first planted again in the 1500s, way back when the Spanish first entered. And that faith endures and it always grows stronger. There, there's a young man about three months, a Navajo high school student, senior in high school, and he waited for all the people uh, to be greeted. And then he came up to me and said, Father, I want to become a Catholic. And I said, okay, well, our CIA is about to end for the year, so, but we can get you ready for September. He said, I need to become Catholic this Easter. And he just gave me that look, and he wouldn't look away. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I said, why do you need to become Catholic by Easter? I leave for the Marines in August. And I said, well, why do you want to be a Catholic? Do you, are there other Catholics in your family? No. <laughs> I said, okay, where did you even find out uh, w about the Catholic Church. I read a lot. And I've, I've loved the faith. And I said, okay. And come to find out, he'd read the whole Catholic catechism. He'd read all. He knew more than I did. Because I interviewed him over and over again. Because I'm thinking, there has to be a flaw here. No. No. He, he was on fire with the faith. And I can't turn him down. So I said, you go to Mass every Sunday. And just as you did today, and you meet with me regularly, and we'll talk about the faith, and, and we can get you in this Easter, I promise. Because if you're leaving in August, I, I don't want to leave you to the military. I mean, I don't know how, how their chaplain is. I don't even know if they have a Catholic chaplain where you're going. He said, thank you. Last week, his mother came with him, and I got to meet her, a very sweet lady, uh, a Navajo lady. And I shook her hand. She says, I want to be, be a Catholic. I was like, wow. I said, well, okay. Uh, and I said, that's wonderful. And uh, you're going to have to go through it. Don't tell me you're going to the Marines, you know. <laughs> and she said, no, I'll be here next year, you know. So, so uh, she's going to go start in September. But I, I, in my talks with Josiah, I found out something interesting. And... Uh, it's the persistence of the faith again. He said his grandfather always wanted to be a Catholic, his great-grandfather, I should say. And I said, that's interesting. Well, he never became a Catholic. No, he tried when he was in the Marines. He was in the Marines, and the, the chaplain just didn't give him any time, which is sad to me, because he wanted to be a Catholic long, long ago. And he told me, my, my great-grandfather was a Marine in World War II. He was a code talker. Now, if you've ever heard the history of the great code talkers, the Navajo are so proud of, of the code talkers from their tribe that really did so much to save our soldiers during uh, World War II, especially in the Pacific. And uh, he said, Josiah, I want you, first of all, to become a Roman Catholic, and secondly, a Marine. And so now he will do both, the persistence of faith. And thank you for your persistent faith. Thank you for your kindness to the least among you. And God bless you all. So I moved the camera around so I'm not losing my mind. This is just <laughs> me moving my little phone. Okay, thank you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things. 
things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, he came in. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death from his head. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the right of the resurrection of the dead life in the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you'd be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all our Catholic leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligent, and diplomatic services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that during Lent we will be renewed in faith through our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church or abandoned the faith, that the Holy Spirit will move them to repentance and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon Tony Bennett, Deacon Mike Nugent, James Joseph, Gabriel Gaudet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Bueno. And for Ma Sister Monica Baptiste Wayland, and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For living and deceased parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, held in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The second collection will be for support of the Diocese of Gallup, New Mexico. 
Thank you for your generosity. Our offertory hymn is number 950, I Am the Bread of Life, number 950. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ, may make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, and your kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As our second collection's being taken up for the Diocese of Gallup, I thank Father Tim Farrell for being with us and sharing his story. As he mentioned, I've enjoyed going out to visit on several occasions now, and the need is great. But our poor box collection this weekend is for Birthright, an organization that helps moms in need have their children. Uh, this Tuesday, Father Pinizzato will give a talk at 7.30 p.m. in the parish hall on habitual behaviors and using the best of scientific research and the spiritual guidance of, guess who? St. Francis de Sales. Next Tuesday, April 4th, I will be giving a talk on the Shroud of Turin at 7.30, speaking about the history as well as the scientific evidence and how that helps us better understand the passion accounts. All of this, of course, is in our bulletin. And then next Sunday, the Boy Scouts invite you to the parish hall for coffee and donuts after the Sunday masses. At the same time, the Cub Scouts will be selling Easter lilies. Let us pray. Pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 761, Take Up Your Cross, number 761. 